Welcome to Mike for Men with your host, Mike Huey. Mike shares real talks for real men who want to make a real impact. If you are renting, this episode is for you. Today, Mike interviews two experts to share why right now is the best time for you to buy your home. And now, your host, Mike Huey. On the line with us today, I have two experts that are going to give you some great ideas on why right now is a, is a phenomenal time for you to be a first-time home buyer if you've never owned before. So if you're renting, man, we got to stop that with you right now. So I'll, I, I've chosen two people that I've known for a long time that invest in real estate themselves and you know have a work with national companies. So wherever you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube, uh, we're able to connect and give you some resources that are local to your area. The first guest I want to introduce is Heather Womack with Caldwell Banker. Heather and I have uh, done real estate uh, conferences and seminars together in the past. Heather, thank you for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Good yeah. to be back with you, Mike. Yeah, thank you. And then my wife, Susan Huey, is with Prime Lending, a national lending company that can uh, help you with your loan. So welcome, Susan. Thanks for having me on the program. I look forward to talking today. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So um, again, both of you are real estate investors. Both of you are with national companies. So um, we can talk in, in general terms. One of the things that is really, boy, in the midst of all this COVID stuff and the interest rates are low and things are happening, Heather, I want to address right now, why is owning a home, uh, at least at this time, more affordable than renting a house? Oh, my goodness. There are so many reasons, but it seems a little counterintuitive to a lot of um, a lot of people who haven't owned a home before um, that owning a home could be actually in the long run uh, less expensive than renting one. And we do have to say there are some major causes for this. And what I'm seeing out there showing a lot of first time home buyers homes about is they can't believe how much they can afford with the interest rates being as low as they are. They're historically low interest rates. And I know that Susan's going to talk more about that. But in the very, very short term, what that means is you can afford more home. Um, another thing is that we're seeing that actually the valuation of homes is rising so quickly that even if you can get into a home today, you, you know, your valuation goes up considerably in the next couple of years. Um, you actually own the property you live in and can take advantage of that when you sell the home, unlike renting, when you really are just giving your money to somebody else and making them wealthy. All right, so let's chat a second. This is coming out uh, February of 21. Um, and I remember we were talking with a good friend of ours, a young lady who's, how old is she? I don't want to put her full name on here, but she's 28, mm -hmm. you know, and she said, Mike, when, I think we were, she, we had her over at our place or something. I don't know, we were playing games or chatting or what, I don't know what. She said, well, when should I buy? And I said, uh, now, right? So, Heather, uh, wouldn't you agree, like, even if you can even get in before the snow melts? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, first, right, Mike, you and I have always talked about this. There's never a bad time to start. Right. 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 I mean, start now. And especially good for her, 28 years old. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Um, if I could have started my uh, investing career at 28 years old, um, boy. Things look a little, they look yeah. great, but I mean, they could look even better. There might right? be palm trees in your back background, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's good. And I will say this too, you know, like I said earlier, rates are just a forecast and right now they're really low. So, you know, yep. they could, could they go up in the near future? Yes, they could. We don't know, you know, so. But I th what happens to, uh, and we, we're recording this in Minnesota, obviously. So Minnesota is very seasonal. I mean, the seasons are really strong, right? Hot, hot summers, cold winters, uh, springs are springs, falls are falls. And and maybe some of the people listening here, maybe they're in San Diego where it's, you know, it fluctuates between 70 and 77, you know, um, or whatever. So, uh, but in general, uh, most people prefer to move, right? In the spring, summer, fall. Mm -hmm. And so that's when prices go up, right? 
Well, traditionally, yes, that yeah. is when prices go up because uh, we, you know, the real estate market is primed at that point for um, a lot of people moving in and out. So there's more movement. Yeah. But like the very first thing we said, Mike, was that, you know, when is the best time to move? And the answer is now. Like in our market here in Minnesota, it, it is all out spring market already. It is mm -hmm. like there are people looking for houses because it's a great time to buy when there, there's still snow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I if I went on the opposite side of my screen and shot out my backyard uh, across to the, you know, it used to be a swamp and fields back there. And now it's getting developed with townhouses. I mean, th those houses are being sold before the siding's on. You know, I mean, it's just get a frame up. Here you go. OK, let's put in. And and I, Susan and I walk around all the time and it's like, oh, my goodness. All five of those units are already filled and cars are in the driveway and they don't even have the grass down. You know, it's just people are moving and the properties I've watched, at least out here, um, even in the last four or five years, I, I can't believe how much properties are going up. So uh, definitely a good time. Um and when your loan officer can write you a loan at two and a half, three percent interest, for goodness sakes, people are complaining about three percent interest. Like that's that's a high. That's that's historical lows. That is re insane how how good yeah. the market is for getting a mortgage. So yeah, yeah, no no question about it. And I will say this, you know, inventory levels is something that we probably want to talk about a little bit. You know, if you think that inventory levels are low right now, wait till this summer. When people are moving and people want to move, <laughs> right, Heather? Yep, jump in. Just yep. jump in. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And uh, because it seems to me, if you wait, um, every it, at least on the properties that I'm watching that are are like ideal for me to either buy as an investment, which are also the same kind of houses that are probably great for first time home buys. Um. I bet you if you waited between now and late fall or winter, you know, if you can't get in because, oh, my goodness, this summer I was trying to buy this house and and we put an offer in, but it's already a bidding war and and things are going, you know, houses sometimes sell in days, not months. Right. Or they get locked up or something like that. And if you don't get in for. Six, eight, seven, you know, so, uh, let's see, six months would be fallish. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, 12 months would be through the, I mean, you're, you're going to have to pay 10, $15,000 more for that property. I mean, they're just going up. I, you know, that's what it, it seems to me. Um, and going back to what we said before too, right. That's 12 yeah. more months that you're paying somebody else rent. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's exactly yeah. it. You know, yeah, that's exactly in your it. pocket. Yeah. And the, the yeah. other factor that I like, you know, we try, there's two different concepts on mortgages you know one you can get a 30-year mortgage so that it's the lowest and then you when you want to make extra payments you can that's one strategy another is a 15-year to get a little bit better interest although i i can't figure out how much better you can get from where this is at right mm -hmm. but if if you're on a you know like a 20-year or 30 i mean it's, it's a year lost of trying to get to the point where your property is free and clear uh you know i know my grandmother, she died a week before her 101st birthday last year. And she always, she had free and clear properties that she was renting out. Her house was free and clear. And she was never financially, you know, in an income level more than a secretary. You know, it's not like she had some kind of high earnings type job, but she just invested in real estate early. I think her first house she got when she was in like early thirties and she just, she just kept saying, Mike, you got to pay your pro house off. You got to pay your properties off, get the properties free and clear. Then nobody can take, you're just paying taxes. You know, that's, you know, uh, and if you wait and you wait and you wait, in fact, for those watching in a couple weeks, a couple weeks ago, I had this whole concept on, um, confidence building and what is, what are the factors that increase confidence and delaying destroys your confidence, you know, jumping in and saying, I'm going to go and I'm going to go and I might fail, but I'm going to learn. I'm going to go. That increases confidence when you keep saying, well, I'll wait till I'm married. OK, well, then we get married. Well, I'm going to wait until I have some kids, you know, because well, my wife and I were too busy right now. Right. And then toddlers are there. And then you think, well, 
I think I, I, I need the money for their schooling and, and hockey lessons and dance lessons. And then, well, okay, they're high school and, you know, and, and if you just keep delaying whatever the decisions are, whether it's a career or home or investing in real estate, all of a sudden you look at it and you're, you're empty nesting, kids are gone. And then you're thinking, oh, it's too late for me. I'm too old. Why should I do it now? And it's like, well, <laughs> if you would have just done it, the decision would have been over, right? So Good point. That's, that's my mantra. Sorry about that for monologuing so long. <laughs> well, and if you look at what is rent, really, it's paying somebody else's mortgage. Yep. Be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At, at, a, at a profit, you know, and so yep. if you can pay yourself rent, you know, uh, that'd be better. So there is a direct correlation between interest rates and the value of the properties, because so many people buy based off of how much can I afford per month? And so that helps you be able to buy a bigger property. And when you have want a bigger property, then then sellers are thinking, I can get more for my property. So it's better to get ahead of this curve uh, than behind the curve at this point. Um, Susan, you know, talking about rates, everyone wants to know about what the interest rates are going to be doing and what's the the forecast or whatever. What's Prime Lending uh, putting out right now? What are they finding nationwide on on the trends? Well, first of all, I will say that it is a forecast, so keep that in mind. But all of the economic indicators point to the fact that interest rates are not going to take a spike up in the near future. Um, that being said, you know, they're very low right now, so there's not much room for them to go down either. So the only way that they can go is up, but they're not expected to go high in the near future. Yeah. So, I mean, Heather, it, you and I have been investing, well, Susan and I too, but uh, all of us have been investing long before the 08 crash, after the 08 crash. Do you recall any time since we've known each other over 20 years that rates are this low? Absolutely not. It's incredible. It is historic when we can say that. I don't know if you can say that, Susan, but I can say that. They are historically low interest rates right now. Yeah. And what that means to buyers is you can buy more house than you've ever been able to buy before for the, mo for the money that you earn. Yep, exactly. So yeah. um, We've we've talked a little bit about rates, obviously, and what we can afford, but I still think, you know, the first time I got on the bike, a bicycle, when I was four years old, five years old, I was a little scared. Yeah. And my kids would get on the bike. They get a little scared. Every time we start something new, we get a little scared, right? I mean, that's just, there's just the fear factor there all the time. So we've talked maybe financially, there's not really much to fear. Get in now. But there's still a lot of other factors that people go through when they're thinking about buying the home. Um, what are some of those things that you find, Heather, uh, that why why people just need to overcome some of these things in their mind about why they shouldn't be holding off, uh, such as, you know, I, I, I can't fix a toilet or whatever those issues are? You know, there are a lot of these kinds of issues, especially the very first time someone um, goes out and starts looking at a home. They get overwhelmed with the idea of it all. But really, there are some ways to know that it's time to become a homeowner. Um, yeah. And we find that it happens after people have been renting for a number of years. Um, you just start to kind of realize that you know, the little fixes that you do on the toilet when you're renting or on the, the doorknob that doesn't work or on the window that won't go up, you just fix them yourself. Well, there yeah. really isn't any difference between that and um, and doing it for yourself in your own home. So the realization that you're kind of ready to become a homeowner comes when you realize you're ready for the home maintenance and like the upkeep yeah. on the house, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, is this where you wanted to go, Mike? Sure. Yeah. No, I mean, I think the other factor that I notice with a lot of people that I talk to, um, they're tired of the bang, bang on the other side of the doors, or they want to start playing drums like I did. You know, when I started picking up drums, neighbors weren't excited about me being in a rental, right? They want you know, get your own privacy, right? So there's, there's the privacy factor. There's ownership factors that uh, uh, once you start down that road, you're like, what held me back? Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. I think it's a big leap sometimes to think 
um, that you're ready to own a home. But once you do it, you look back and think, the things I put up with, you know, like you really want your own home. You want more privacy. When you kind of start feeling that, like, I want my own privacy and I want control over my own space. I want to paint my own walls. I want to, you know, fix whatever food I want to fix or be able to put in the garage, whatever you want to. There's just a, a feeling of home that eventually someone does get to. Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. Uh, for Susan and I, we've been in our current home for uh, what has it been, Susan? Four years? Five something like years that, this at the summer. Time of this yeah. Five, five years, years this summer. I mean, I have put in, not everybody needs to be like me, but I'm just saying I've put in in-floor <laughs> heat and another kitchenette area downstairs and a party room and a guest room and, and pavered fire pits and decks and, you know, all the stuff wow. that you get to do when it's your place. And, you, you know, you just can't do that when you're renting somebody else's unit and you're putting equity into your own own stuff. So, yeah, those are definitely some some uh, issues behind people. Let me talk about some of the myths that hold us back too. Um, Susan, you know, one of the myths that a lot of people think that they have in buying a house is I've got to come up with like 20% down payment on this house. Uh, from a lender's perspective, what are some of the programs that are out there for first time home buyers? Mike, that's a great thing. I was just thinking, you know, one of the things I would say, maybe Heather, you can address this. The biggest fear to hold people back is money. Um, so we have some awesome first time home buyer programs out there. You can get in for as little as 3% down. Um, you know, that is just huge. So um, you don't have to come up with this, you know, $20,000 worth of money to get in. Um, and let me address as I'm talking about that, just what constitutes a first time home buyer. A first time home buyer is if you have not owned a home in the last three years. So maybe you owned a home like five years ago, but you've been renting ever since, you would still be considered a first time home buyer. So so, um, so let me interject. So if if I owned a house in, uh, I grew up in Nashville, for instance, and I had a job and I had a home, and then I got with this great company and they moved me to Denver, Colorado, and now I've been renting for, th- how many years did you say I haven't owned a home? Three, the last three years. Yeah, so if I've now lived in Denver and I've been renting for three years, I'd still qualify for that first time home buyer because I don't own the home in Nashville anymore. So that's that's an interesting thing. Cause I think yeah. a lot of millennials are, you know, we're we're getting to the point where they're transferring, they're owning companies, or they're they're able to drop things like this and take that new job off in Boston or wherever it is. And mm-hmm. oh, I, I think uh, Heather, your kids have been like that, right? My oh, yeah. kids are like that. My kids live all over the country. So uh, so mm-hmm. that's an important thing uh, factor to know. Now, that's that's great feedback. What about credit scores, Susan? Um, people sometimes think they've got to have a credit score like uh, Mike Huey or Heather Womack, and and that's not quite <laughs> always true, right? Um, what do you do with people? What are the what's the process of helping people one find out if their credit score is good enough, and mm-hmm. secondly, if it's not good enough, you know what resources would somebody like Prime lending provide? That's a great question. We actually, the easiest way to find out is to go online and apply um, or, you know, sit down in person with me and apply. I just have to remember, you know, a lot of people think, I want to start over, sorry. Okay. Hmm? That's a great question. Um, You do not have to have a rock star credit to, I can't even Just just slow down, relax. (laughs) <laughs> That's the beauty of editing. Love that. That's a great question. You do not have to have a really good credit score. Um, what we do first is when you apply for the loan, we run your credit to find out where it actually is at. If your credit needs some help, we have a designated department within our company that will actually work with you on getting your credit score up. Depending on where it's at, if it just needs a little bit of work, we could get you up in a matter of a couple of weeks and be able to apply, or sometimes it will take a couple of months, but we will hold your hand and work with you to get your credit at a better standing. But you don't have to have a credit score over 800. I just had somebody um, a couple of weeks ago that had a credit score of just in the low 700s, and they were approved for a loan. So it doesn't have to be, you know, really awesome. 
Great. Great. Heather, I want to direct the conversation over to real estate agents. One of the things I notice is that a lot of people are, why should I have an agent? And when I was a real estate broker, I had a lot of agents working at the brokerage, found out that uh, National Association of Realtors said that only 7% of all agents actually invest in real estate themselves, uh, which is a big issue. Because if you really think real estate is a great investment, you would think that they would buy it. And both of all three of us are real estate investors on this line. So that helps. Um, and, and one of the reasons I picked Heather was she's part of a national company. And if you're in a area that's not the Twin Cities where we live, uh, Heather will be able to direct you to s some people that can really help you in your local area. But I notice a lot of people when they're thinking, they think they can either just drive the drive the streets and find a for sale sign that's in the yard and you really don't need to get this agent stuff involved. Heather, how do you work with first time buyers? And, and we actually, now that I think about it, we just sent a very close friend who's a first time home buyer to you this last week, right? So walk us through that process of what do you do to help people and what the value is that an agent brings. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Um, this is a very common, common question, um, especially the first time that you're buying a home. Uh, I think an agent can be very, very valuable. Uh, I know that 90% of the people in the United States that are looking for homes start on the internet. And it's easy for us to go to Zillow, realtor.com, home.com, whatever your preferred website is, and go look for the house that you want. But then it becomes a little more difficult um, in the process to just kind of get it all lined up. And I think this is where a realtor can be very, very helpful. My first suggestion is to go uh, ask your friends, ask uh, the people that are investing like myself um, for a referral. And we all work together to try and provide referrals for good tenured agents. But then check the agent's website, see how much the business they actually have done. Um, but even past that, here's what an agent will do for you. In the very beginning, the very first thing you want to do before you even start looking for a house is go talk to someone like Susan and ask what can you, what kind of loan can you get? Get pre-approved for the loan. A real estate agent can help you get pre-approved for the loan. After that's established, um, then of course, you know, we all know that real estate agents take you around, they help you find the right home, but they actually help you find the right home for your needs. And we ask a lot of questions of things people may not think of about the roof, about the yard, about the septic system, if there is one, be very helpful along those ways. Once we find the house that is your house, the house that you really think you'd like to buy, it's our uh, duty to help negotiate an offer for you. And sometimes negotiating an offer, there's a lot of moving pieces on an offer to buy a home. Um, it's not just how much you're gonna pay for the house. It's also you know, what the closing terms are gonna be, what kind of insurance you're gonna get. You can see that there's a path that you can go down of yep. needing information. Yeah. Um, you know, we always ask for a house to be inspected. No one wants to buy a house with all the moving pieces, everything from a furnace to a septic system, or if you don't have that, I don't know, to the plumbing systems. Um, we help you find a home inspector and help go through so you understand all the moving pieces of your home after the inspection is done. So yeah. we attend that home inspection and help you kind of figure out what's going on with that. And then there are a number of additional things that we do. Sometimes we help you act, you know, get an attorney if needed. We help with the inspection. After the inspection, we get repair requests and help line up all the professionals that can help do, you know, get your house in exactly the order you want before you close. So as you can see, there are a lot of moving pieces. Can you buy without a realtor? Yes. But we are trained and go through a pretty rigorous training to find a way to help you. And especially agents that are a little more tenured um, have a lot of background in knowing how to help you out. Yeah, no, no question. I think uh, for myself, even though I am a pretty seasoned investor and I don't I have no idea how many properties I've I've owned, uh, purchased, sold. Even still, I use an agent because I'm busy doing my work. You know, I'm a very 
busy, busy executive and I just don't have time to go hunt and look and negotiate for my, you know, I'm like, okay, this is what I need. Go find it. And they're a, a good agent and a good mortgage person. Uh, along with some other things, a good, uh, I think a good attorney, a good tax person, you know, all those kind of things. So maybe we'll talk about real estate investing in another episode, but they're, they're, they definitely pay for themselves. So I can't recommend that enough. Um, and so Heather, you're with Caldwell Banker. Yes. Um, some of the things that I want to help you be able to share why Caldwell Bankers, uh, you know, the brokerage, why you're with them and, and, uh, because you're probably going to refer other agents. If somebody calls in uh, Miami, Florida, you're going to probably be referring them to an agent that's in the Caldwell Banker family down there. What? How would you say you guys are are really helping customers uniquely or differently, or why should they consider somebody in your brokerage? Well, I truly believe that you have to be a specialist in your own area to fully support um, yep. the needs of your regional uh buyers. Yep. So if someone gives me a call off of the referral from a friend in Chicago, um, it's my responsibility as an investor and as an agent um, to make sure that that person is well covered. And I would then be calling our global network. So yep. Global Banker has a global network uh, to find a referral of an agent that's tenured, that knows the business well in that area and can support. Yep. Um, yep. You know, the yeah. Buyer. I think I think that's great because I, I, uh, some people like the little boutique shops, but, uh, you know, they don't, it's hard to be a specialist in different areas with boutique shops and it's hard to scale. So, yeah. you know, for once, a, once the thing that will happen that hopefully if, if uh, people keep listening or watching our uh, YouTube channels or podcasts, you know, scaling is a major part of life is how do you get going and then scale to get more properties build your investments, whatever that is. And, and you'll want to be able to scale and you will, you need a company that can scale with you. So uh, that's great. That's why I uh, love having you on with us, Heather. Thank you. Susan, how about you over at Prime Lending? What, what makes Prime Lending different? Because I've worked with a lot of lenders uh, and I've been with the people you've been working with. I think they've done like all of our, in fact, Heather, you, you know, uh, Darren and some of the people that Heather works with, I mean, that Susan works with, I mean, it, they're just golden, but uh, they're nationwide out of Texas. What what makes Prime Lending different than some of the other lenders? Well, Prime Lending is different, I think, because, you know, in this day and age, even with 2020, last year was a banner year for real estate and for loans, but we provide a personal experience. You know, um, when Heather, as a real estate agent, refers a client to me, she's not referring that client to my website to go there and fill out an application and, you know, get that way. I, I think, you know, in this day and age, people still like the personal touch and we are very personable. We follow up with the borrower. We let them know what's going on. A well-trained loan officer will take the time to explain everything to that borrower from the 1003 form, which is the application, to how the rates are going to work, when they're changing, when they should actually lock in. They will give recommendations. Um, they're just worth their weight in gold. And, you know, um, I will say this, what difference does a good rate make if you can't close the loan? Prime Lending has a big history of closing loans yeah. and they close them on time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the things I've definitely liked about prime lending, you know, so that's why we've, you guys have done all of our loans. So uh, thank you for that. Well, thank you so much for your time, ladies. I, I greatly appreciate it. It's always refreshing to be able to chat with both of you. Of course, I live with one of, one of you, so that's a uh, different, but um, if, if, uh, if I'm going to put their email information in the bucket. So if you're at all interested or you're needing, or you need some information or you need to talk to someone locally, anything like that, both of these ladies can either help you nationally or, or, or refer you to qualified people in your area. Again, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for listening. Remember the world does need you. It needs your love. Your family needs your love. I, and most of all, we're mostly talking legacy here. Once you get a property and you get moving, I'm telling you, the world needs your legacy. Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk with you soon. Thank you for listening to Mike for Men. If you enjoyed listening to this in a podcast, please subscribe and give us a review.
If you are watching this video, please subscribe and click the bell below so you will know when the next episode comes out. If there is a topic you would like Mike or his guests to address, please write them in the comment section below. Again, thank you for listening.